Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're gonna do a brand new video commentary for BFME2 The Rise of the Witch King patch 2.02 version 8.2. The game that we're gonna cast today was played on the map Forts of Eisen on a neutral host and is between two of the greatest players of BFME2 The Rise of the Witch King. On the one side we will have Mr. Smog with his Goblin faction and on the other side we will have Irby with his Isengard faction. As always, I hope that you're gonna enjoy every single second of your stay and if you do, please don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content like this. Before losing any more time, let's get it started. On the right side of the map we have the blue goblin player Mr. Smog and Mr. Smog's opponent on the left side of the map is the yellow Isengard player Irby, starting with two furnaces. Mr. Smog on the other side is obviously starting with two tunnels instead. Isengard against goblins and like mentioned at the beginning of the video this game was played on a neutral host so no one has a host advantage which actually if you are playing Rise of the Witch King or any other BFME games by yourself you need to know host advantage means a lot. Alright two furnaces into the Uruk pits and we will have a Kreebine start from the Isengard player Irby which is quite interesting. Um, normally Isengard players starting only with this ability when they are facing or when they are starting with the work pit. Because as you know, work pit, the units you are able to recruit, those work packs and also work riders later on, they have the whole ability, which is a buff like Warchant. And you know the fact that buffs can't stack with each other, so you can you know make work packs, whole, use the whole ability on them, buff them, and then you can also use the Creebine to debuff the enemy units. To just have the double stats going on in your favor in this big battles. Right, uh, Goblin Cave is up on the field already into the second Goblin Cave. Irby on the other side is actually starting with the cr uh, Crossbow Man, which is also interesting. So I'm assuming Irby is playing, or planning to play defensively at the beginning of the game. And if Mr. Smog gonna send those units forwards to him, it's gonna be a big mistake. But it looks like he's gonna lead to the creep at the right side of the river. Which is actually a great idea. I like this. Crossbowmen are here. They are waiting for the opponent units to arrive. But that's not going to be the case. As Mr. Smog is actually minds playing with Irby. Irby is expecting that. But Mr. Smog is like, no, 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 no. You are thinking wrong, my friend. I'm just going to creep in stats. Which is a great way to boost your eco. And get some extra power points, obviously. The second crossbowman is coming, now he can move with the first one forwards. Maybe we'll be able to interrupt this units from creeping or can go for the creep by himself. On the other side, Mr. Smog was able to sneak one of those builders at the bottom left side and that's the whole premise, right? With the goblin and dwarf factions of Rise of the Witch King. That's your whole goal at the beginning of the game. You want to make sure when you are playing with goblins to sneak those tunnels close to the side of your opponent. This way you will have a huge mobility. And that's gonna give you a lot of uh, you know, room to play with, which is amazing. And obviously, on the upper, on the opposite side for Irby, for the Isengard player, he needs to actually, you know, kinda be a bit more careful. You know, watch every single possible side. And Irby is an experienced Rise of the Witch King player. If you, I mean, if you are following me on my YouTube channel now for a while, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, those players were actually playing for the last time in the World Championship Grand Finals for Rise of the Witch King. In the best of seven, it was a super close series. I don't want to tell you guys who won, just in case you didn't watch yet. So you can watch it later on. It's an amazing series. I would highly recommend you guys to watch. Smart move here from Irby, killing, the Uru um, killing not the Urukai, but the Goblin Warriors first, before he's gonna secure the creep for himself. And a huge buff is going on. Rebind from the Isengard player was used. Uh, smart move here to not Run away with the crossbowman. If you didn't know, uh, the goblin warriors from the goblin faction are the fastest infantry units in the game. So there is obviously no reason of you trying to run away from them because that's not gonna work. Instead, he was fighting in the fortress range as the fortress was also able to shoot at the enemy units. But Mr. Smog was still able to take down one of the furnaces and one of the crossbowmen, which is actually quite smart. We have now some Wildman units coming from the clan seeding, which is another smart idea here from Irby, because they cost they are quite cost efficient, they cost only 150 each, so like 50 more than the Goblin Warriors, but they are still able to win the 1v1 situations. In the meantime, we have a fight around this area, as the pikemen from Irby will be taken down. 
Um, in the meantime, also Mr. Smog is creeping at the bottom right side. That's gonna be his second creep on the map Forts of Eisen. He should not be able to deal much more damage as those crossbow men are hitting like a truck. He was able to save one of the level 2 goblin warriors, which is actually amazing. I like that. Spider Pit is up on the field, already level 2 boys. You know what that means? We're gonna get some dirty, badass goblin spider riders on the field. Which is amazing. The cavalry units from the goblin faction. Irby is just gonna creep at the top left side. So that's gonna make the creeping thingy on the map force of Eisen kinda even. Two creeps for Mr. Smog and two creeps for the Eisen Guts player Irby. Um, yeah, with three goblin caves you will be able to spam a lot of goblins. But I'm kinda surprised that Mr. Smog is not trying to sneak more tunnels close to the side of Irby. Because he could be doing that, right? He could be using the top side. Uh, okay, he was trying to interrupt that, but again, smart move from Irby. To not risk the biscuit, you wanna make sure, first of all, to kill all the remaining units from your opponent before you're gonna try to get the last hit on the creep. The furnace should be taken down. And the pressure is real. I mean, he is actually putting pressure so much on Irby. And Irby on the other side has only one unit he was able to send forward. But Spider Riders are here. So they should be able to trample them down. And that's also gonna be the case. Pretty sure they're gonna get one shot hit here. Once he's able to see them. They are actually kind of stealthed. Uh, you know, around the trees. And another furnace has been taken down. This one is also almost down. And yeah, one shot it. Even in the whole ground stance, they are getting one shot it because the Goblin Spider Riders are using the aggressive stance, which is actually buffing their damage by 15, uh, 25%. Sorry, 25% is actually a great buff, especially when you are trampling those swordsmen. You know, that's gonna give you the one hit potential, which was also the case. I'm pretty sure if you wouldn't use the aggressive stance, they would be pretty low, but they wouldn't get one shot it. But I'm not sure. Guys, maybe let me know in the comment section below. That's a massive army from Mr. Smog leading forward. During the time, we're gonna take a look into the current power points and command points from the players. Irby, the Eisen Guts player, has 525 command points collected, sitting on almost 6 power points now. On the other side, we have already the cave pads unlocked. Warchan was used on the army. 600 command points available for the blue goblin player, Mr. Smog. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. There are some units, but they should not be able to deal too much damage because more units are coming from the Goblin Caves anyway. The level 2 Furnace and the Uruk Pit are being the target. Uh, Spider Riders are looking to trample the backline, which is amazing. Very well done here from Mr. Smok. And there are still some crossbowmen. He can actually trample them down as well. And with this attack, he should be able to take down the level 2 Furnace and the Uruk Pit. That is a ma another crossbow man! Holy moly! That's a big fiesta right there, boys. What, what is happening? It should never be the case. I mean, he has still some units remaining on the field at the bottom left side as he's planning to take down the tunnel. Will be just getting demolished by Mr. Smog to deny any kind of experience and power points uh, for his opponent. Nice trample on those Wildman of Dunland units one more time. I mean, those Spider Riders are definitely paying off. And the mistake from Irby was to not have any or not... I mean, he had one battalion of pikemen, which was obviously, as we were able to see, not enough. I mean, this game is looking great so far for Mr. Smog. I think if he doesn't make any mistakes or any major mistakes, this game should be won pretty soon. But we know... Rise of the Witch King, we have seen so many shenanigans, we have seen so many amazing comebacks. Maybe that's also gonna be the case in this game on the map, Forts of Eisen. And yeah, I'm always excited, guys, when those players are facing against each other. Because most of the time we are gaining, you know, more game experience by watching those replays. But also, entertainment is non plus ultra in those games. Charku is on the field, trying to snipe down a builder. Builder is tanky, <laughs> he's not gonna be taken down. But Charku, if you didn't know, is one of the greatest counters against the Spider Riders. That's also probably the case why Irby was able to recruit him or was going for him, saving for him. And yeah, that's being the case, he's able to one-shot those Goblin Spider Riders and they are forced to play super careful and they are forced to retreat. There is one unit from the Wildman of Dunland. If my allies die, I'm gonna die as well, you know, he's like... In a world where my entire battalion is dead, I don't want to live. And he's gonna sacrifice for himself. He'll be just taken down by the goblins, by the riders. Right. 
Um, I can't tell who was able to creep this, but I'm assuming it was actually Irby before he went to take down the tunnel. I think he was also able to creep this. However, he didn't capture the in for himself, which would, by the way, give him the option to get some black oryx on the fields. Another cheaper option in compare with the Urukai. Urukai are quite strong, don't get me wrong, but they are quite expensive as well. And on the other side, you could just easily go for the Wildman of Dunlands. And they have an amazing passive ability as well with the Pillage whenever you will be attacking. And we're gonna see that here. You see the plus one, plus one, plus one. I mean, he is gaining that much resources, which is not, I mean, which is not a great amount of resource income. But at the same time, you are stealing the same amount of resources from your opponent, which makes it a win-win situation to have those units on the field. Right, we have a lot of Goblin Spider Riders on the fields. I like to see that. Um, the only downside of those units are that if you lose them, you are giving your you know opponent a lot of power points. And like mentioned before, Sharku, I mean, wait a second, there are white men, I didn't know that. They are throwing rocks like, you know, hobbits, <laughs> which is amazing, I didn't know that, guys. Right, the furnace should be potentially be taken down, let's see if he will be able to take it down just in time. I mean, there is a builder trying to repair and try deny that from happening, and the builder is the MVP of the game. He was able to save it. If he wouldn't repair, by the way, uh, this furnace would be taken down. Right, Goblin Spider Riders from Mr. Smog are retreating, but you can just keep an eye on the map control at the bottom left side of your screen around this area, the minimap. By the way, we have Spider Allies Special Summon. I even didn't see that coming. There we go. The furnace has been now taken down. It's, they are fighting, and those spiders, spiders, by the way, my English pronouncement is amazing, I know guys, you're welcome. Um, they are much stronger than the spider links from the spider pit. They are actually hitting like a truck, especially against the structures, they are super, super, super strong. Talking about strong defense, we have now one lookout tower into the second one, Sharku is almost level 4 already, the pressure is still real, and on the other side... Mr. Smog is pretty much untouched and he's now having the fissure on the field and planning to get some half-trolled pikemen to counter Sharku. He's gonna be pretty big against that. Nice clumping here, by the way. Uh, what, you know, just in case you don't know what clumping means. Um, unlike in Battle for Middle Earth 1, you know, BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King, you have like a larger size of battalions, right? For example, in BFME 1, one soldier battalion you have only five soldiers which makes it easy to control them but in rise of the witch king on the other side you have like bunch of units in one battalion and if you are right clicking on a structure it might happen that you know multiple units from this specific battalion are not able to attack the structure that's you know why there is a you know micro which is being called clump you are, you know, grouping all your units in a tiny area and making sure that every single unit from the battalion are able to attack. This way is obviously you're gonna maximize or, or increase your damage output and take down those structures within seconds. The Goblin Spider Riders were able to creep this troll at the top right side and I think with that being said it's quite even. Two works and a troll um, for Mr. Smog and two works and a troll for Irby. Irby is playing super defensively. This level 3 furnace is quite slow. He was using Devastation before and that's one of the greatest powers of Isengard faction in Rise of the Witch King. You have so many tools to boost your eco. You have Devastation, you have Industry, you have Field of Fires later on. Warchan was used. Oh, looking for a trample. There are some pikemen you want to avoid. Okay, still a great job. Warchan was used from Irby defensively. Those units, they are pretty much one hit, which is not gonna help them because Isengard and all the other evil factions in Rise of the Witch King, unlike the good factions, are they don't have a well, like Man of the West does, for example, so they are not able to heal over time. Into land will be used here from Mr. Smok, I'm assuming, yes, that's been the case, as he's fully committing to this lookout tower and taking down this furnace at the very same time as well. He was actually losing many, many of those Goblin Spider Riders, but he keeps up the pressure. However, I think Irby is still doing a great job defending. We have now also Lourdes on the field, almost level 3. There is Az Azok, he's also here. You gotta be careful, once this Lourdes hits level 4, and I'm assuming he will be, because there are still many units you will be able to kill, this, you know, Azok will be in trouble. 
because we know with level 4 cripple will be unlocked and that means Azok won't be able to move anywhere and then he can just pull out pull off the sword use the carnage and take him down and yeah he's gonna hit level 4 pretty soon by the way there we go level 4 killing those spider riders like mentioned before are giving you so much experience now you can just cripple them down boom there we go put on the sword use the carnage buff your damage by 200 percent and take him down Sharku is also level 4 here and a great defense after all yeah he kept you know he was losing a couple of those structures and the, the lookout tower but in exchange he was able to kill so much Sharku was able to hit level 5 Lourdes is almost level 5 as well level 5 will be the time for Lourdes to shine ah he has three uh, Barrow's expansion, which are each of them are actually increasing the command points command points limit by 75. That's why he has full command points now, and I see two quick trolls are running it down. Um, what I don't like about Mr. Smog's playstyle is that he's not expanding quite nicely. I mean, this map is quite empty still. Think about it, guys. There are not enough tunnels or furnaces around. The bottom side and the top side, they are, you know, there, are, there is absolutely nothing, but there is only one tunnel at the top right side, but look at this. Normally in a game like this, especially in this level of those two players, you can see they are expanding hardcore, especially for the Goblin Faction. It's actually super necessary to expand uh, because you can then attack from many, many different pathways at the very same time using the mobility of those tunnels with your Goblins, Goblin Spider Riders, half Troll Swordsman, after all, Pikeman. There are a bunch of units he's actually not doing anything with. Um, he was able to take down the level 3 furnace, but he, oh, he lost a lot. He lost a lot. And most of the time, if you are looking for those traits, you need to ask yourself, is it worth it? You know? I mean, yeah, at this stage, maybe it might be worth it to deny the, you know, the resource income for the Isengard's player as he's struggling anyway. But like mentioned before, the Vestation was helping him out anyway. So he has Sharko on the field, Lourdes a strong hero. Talking about Lourdes, he might be in trouble. Trolls are running it down. Spider allies, special summon trolls are hitting like a truck. And now with the spiders being special summons, Lourdes has to run for his life. Backup is coming. Pikemen are here. Will he be able to get away? That's the main question. I mean, they are also using the poison, so he's gonna take damage over time. Lourdes actually was able to survive. And smart move placing him in between the army. Spider allies are still, they don't give up. They want to finish what they have started. Tower has been taken down by those cave trolls. One of them is quite slow. Lourdes is running for his life. Will he be able to get away? He's actually dancing around the units. <laughs> Look at this smart move from your from Irby here. But he's taking damage over time still. The poison is active. The trolls are running it down. Lourdes is going to use the carnage for the armor buff. It's going to also make your armor... Oh, he's going to be taken down anyway. But you know what? I take it. Yes, he, he lost one lookout tower, but he was able to bait the spider ally special summon, which is a super massive and strong special summon. And then he was also killing both the trolls, which is a great treat. Right. Um, many, many goblin warriors are here. Half troll pikemen are also here. Goblin archers are even here. Sharku is taking a bit of amount of damage, but nothing too crazy. Wildman of Dunland special summon from Irby now for defensive purposes. The lookout tower will be finally taken down. The furnace is destroyed. Is he trying to take down the clan stealing? But those structures they are quite tanky. They have 3000 health with level 1 only. This tower should get destroyed. There, are, there is also Wildman of Dunland special summon from Mr. Smog, by the way. Okay, I, he doesn't have any towers on the field anymore. Which is actually, you know, giving now Mr. Smog the chance to go for those all-out fights. I mean, I don't, I can't explain you guys how Ur how Irby is still in the game. In a situation like this, you can see the players are pretty much calling it GG now, you know, because he lost so much. He lost so much, and on the other side, he wasn't able to touch anything from Mr. Smog. Look at this level three tunnels. That's amazing. If a fight around this area, Irby was actually able to get this one under his control. Now he's moving for a counter attack. And that's one of the things you need to be prepared for, you know? You need to be ready for that. Because most of the time, and I, as you know guys, I'm casting so many games of Rise of the Witch King since like a year. I mean, recently I was not that active, sorry for that guys, but you know what I mean. I was casting so many tournaments, normal games, clan wars and whatsoever. Every time when I see someone is playing defensively, 
they are not doing that obviously forever because if you forever only play defensively you will never be able to end up winning the game but instead they are actually playing defensively yeah they keep losing one or two furnaces but then they make sure to keep those units alive they have and then they move for a big counter attack which is not gonna be the case here because i think those are from the special summon anyway a couple of them at least so i don't think that he will be able to deal too much damage but i mean if you still be able to take down two or three tunnels especially with those wildmen with the pillage ability it's gonna be worth it and you know as you're oh there, there we go as hey Gorkil, the goblin king is here beautiful what is isengard actually doing let me check take a look into it because isengard has to plan something he needs to have more resources than he actually currently has so maybe he's going for saruman i don't know i can tell Lourdes is gonna put on the sword, God kills the Goblin King against Lourdes. Who is gonna win this one? The big showdown. Fight! I mean, Lourdes is just unfair, guys. This guy, for me, is the strongest hero of... Oh, I take it back. We have a big bad boy on the field. Drogov, the Dragon Lord. Ladies and gentlemen. Azok is running for his life, by the way. Sharku is actually chasing him. Got killed, the Goblin King has been taken down. Azok is trying to get in safety. Oh yeah, Fireball in your face. Dealing tons of damage. And one of the strongest and the most ex one of the most expensive heroes of the Rise of the Witch King for sure. Plus 5,000 resources. But we might see a wizard coming out of the fortress. Saruman the Betrayer. And who will now rule the Middle Earth? Saruman, my lord. And Sauron, obviously. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, guys. I'm too hyped when I see those wizards. They are my favorites of Battle for Middle-earth games. Looking for a... I mean, the auto attack animation is pretty slow. I gotta admit that one. I mean, he's like, oh, he, you don't want to take too much damage. Warchan was used. Lurt is level 5, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he's level 5. And look at the damage output. That's actually quite impressive. Remember, Warchan stacks with the leadership of Lurt. With that being said, Warchan is increasing the damage output by 50%. Additional to that, the leadership from Lourdes is increasing the damage output by another 33%. Which means they have right now 83%. Oh, he's committing? I don't know about that. Is he trying to take him down? Will he be able? No. I mean, in which world would that be a great trait anyway? Even if he would be able to take down the Sharku, which he was, you know, not even to, able to do that, it's not a trade you are looking for. You don't want to trade your drug of the Dragon Lord for a Sharku. You know, and a greedy there, which got, you know, he got punished big time. I mean, you know, imagine a world in, in which you are investing 5,000 resources for a single hero. And then you are trying to trade this hero for a hero who costs less than 2,000 resources. Not being able to kill him. And then end up losing your 5,000 hero. I think Mr. Smog is quite tilted right now. He's gonna go actually for the Armory now. Uh, gonna make sure to upgrade those half troll swords. Man, they are quite strong as well. He's also gonna get some giants now from the level 3 Fissure. Spider Allies special summon one more time. Beautiful Vizar Plus here from Saruman, who is half a level away from getting the Fireball unlocked, which, you know, requires you to be level 2 at least. And we have some Lumber Mills, actually. He's using now this upgrade on the Fortress, the Bats, which are actually increasing his vision control incredibly. Look at this, how much he's able to see alone with the upgrade on the Fortress. And I like this, because I don't like to play in the dark. This way you are able, you are aware of that, what's gonna happen, you know. You have now more reaction time, obviously. I'm assuming he's also saving for the field of fires. Clan seeding is level 3 just to make the structure a bit tankier. Now the structure has 6000 health which is a lot. And Smok is now moving for another attack. Talking about Mr. Smok, he has 10 power points collected. Full command points now for a while. War chance, Tainted Land, Cave Bats, Wildman of Dunland which is gonna be ready pretty soon. Spider Alliance which was just recently used. And 11 power points collected afterwards. But there is a wizard. And as long as there is a wizard on the field, I still have hope, like Pippin. But um, obviously this is a, you know, bad, evil wizard. But he's gonna go for... Oh, yeah, sit down. Look how much experience and levels he was able to gain with a beautiful... I Actually, there was a mistake from Mr. Smog. He's pretty much running into that, you know. That's a mistake you don't want to do. 
Um, he's quite healthy too, so I don't think that Mr. Smog will be able to finish him. Uh, Azok got crippled once again using the Great Battle Rage, which is increasing his damage by 100%. Fireball was used on Gorkil the Goblin King, who was actually chasing down Saruman. Now he's sitting between two towers, like the movie, you know, you get it? You get it? Two towers? <laughs> and now we have also one mountain giant who should be just, you know, demolishing those structures. Azok, Awakened Worm, Special Summon, Saruman and Clues were both able to survive and this Saruman was the MVP of this fight. I don't know what this Gorkil the Goblin King is doing there, really. He's running it down. Level almost 3. I mean, don't underestimate that guy, by the way, guys. If you manage to get this guy level 10, you will be able to summon not one, but not two, but three fire drakes under your control with the level 10. But for now, he is going to be sent back to the fortress. Mountain Giants, the problem is he doesn't have any way to defend them, which is a mistake. They are quite strong against structures. Now we're going to have some goblins backing them up. Uh, he lost Drogov, he lost God Kills the Goblin King, I think, for twice already. He already lost uh, Azok as well. On the other side, Erbi lost only one time his Lords, and Saruman was unkilled for now. Vision of Palantir was used. If you didn't know, Vision of Palantir from the Isengard faction can be used to, for scouting purposes, but in this case, it was actually used for the buff. So, spies on the enemy forces. We got this. And detect stealth units. Also great, but then. It grants your allied units 15% increased movement speed, which is actually amazing when it comes to chase the enemy units down. Oh yeah, another beautiful wizard blast off screen. I was not able to catch that. But also, if you want to run away, for example, and if you want to make your units run faster. Oh, Saruman is taking way too much damage here. Poison blades activated from those goblin warriors, so that means Saruman will be taking damage over time. Will it be enough to kill him though? I don't think so. He has still some health. He should be able to get away. Azok got crippled down, but he was able to survive. And actually, Erby is getting back to the game. I think, yeah, there we go. Feel the fires activated from Erby. That means 70% more resource income from those lumber mills, which is amazing, as he is also going now for the armory and the war pit at the very same time. All right. I mean, this game is quite open still. Yes, look, the money from Erby is actually crazy with 750 command points only. Uh, like mentioned before, the only reason why Mr. Smoke has full command points are obviously those uh, expansions around the fortress. Each of them are increasing the command points by Mr. Sm from Mr. Smoke by 75. That means 225 increased com uh, com can talk today, guys. Um, command points only from those three expansions. All right, Smoke is now moving for attack. He has a bunch of those um, units, those mountain giants on the field. They are gonna be good for those for those big fights. To put down the enemy units, they are also dealing a decent amount of damage to the units, but they are mainly made for the siege purposes. Um, and for that, you need to have an army kind of in front of them to protect, you know, to protect them because they are quite squishy. So if Erby manages to reach to them, he should be able to take them down quite fast. Right, uh, they have even the Forge Blades here, by the way, not Scavenge Armor just yet. The damage output is being increased. Creebine is flying around from the Isengard player Erby. Now you need to use the chance. I mean, now is the time to shine because the war chance, war chance, and the Creebine are on cooldown from Erby, but it's available for Mr. Smock. It means he can nullify the leadership from Lourdes's leadership with the passive from the cave bats, debuff the enemy units on top of that. Oh, we have Drogov back on the field, by the way, boys. Saruman is recovering. Level 5 already. Level 6 will be the time for Saruman to shine with the Thunderbolt. He's gonna hit like a truck. They are protectless here. I don't like the fact. Yes, four of them. Fireball will be used. Saruman might show him what a real fireball looks like soon. It's recharging. It's on cooldown still. Um, Erby has surprisingly great amount of map control. I mean, what you could possibly do is just, you know, focus with the drug of the Dragon Lord on the map control, make sure to kill the furnaces. But, you know, Erby has also some towers protecting those structures, which is amazing. Lumber mills all over the place. 70% more resource income with the field of fire upgrade on it. And he should never, ever run out of resources until the moment when every single tree got harvested, which is gonna take a while to happen. Right, Sharku is on the field, actually doing that what Drogov should be doing now for a long time. Uh, focusing on the map control, trying to be annoying, taking down those tunnels slowly but surely. 
Um, in the meantime, Armory also was up, obviously, level 3 already. He has forged... No, he has the heavy armor purchased. And I'm assuming he's gonna also go for the forged blades. Now we have a fight. Saruman, we're gonna keep an eye on this white wizard. He's gonna be changing the outcome. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He was not able to kill them, but he was able to knock them down. Fireball is coming from the backline. Spider Alliance special summon. Thunderbolt on your face! What? Well, that has to be Thunderbolt, right? Azok got crippled down. This guy is running for his life. No, that was not even the Thunderbolt. That was a Fireball ability, actually. He was able to do so much damage. He's trying to commit again. He needs to be super careful. He's quite slow. I hope he's not going to use him again. But he's running into the Extrovers. Will they be able to finish him off? That's the question. One more hit. Going to be near. And he was barely, barely able to survive. And now he needs to be super careful. One more hit needed for Drogov to die. He's almost level 3. But has only the Fireball ability available. He needs to get level 3 for the Wing Blast. Which is also going to be amazing for those big, massive fights. And then level 10 is obviously going to be the time. Like for the most heroes. To drag off the Dragon Lord to shine. He's going to be sent back to the base. And just a couple of seconds later. He should be good to go again. And will be recovering over time. Alright. Um, yeah, Mr. Smog was not able to deal the damage he was looking for. A great defense after all. There's a great micro with this White Wizard. From the Isengard faction by Irby. The Devastation is going to be ready soon. 13 and a half power points collected. On the other side, we have 19 power points collected by Mr. Smog. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty dope. He's going to be able to use a Summon Dragon pretty soon. Which is going to be, you know, after the Awakened Worm. Awakened Worm was used before... Was He was trying to kill this tower, by the way. Which is kind of questionable. If you didn't know, the Worm is going to deal almost no damage to the towers. So instead of wasting him... Trying to kill a tower, you, you should be just focusing with him on the furnaces or Urukpil or whatsoever. Because it's easier to kill. It's a massive army. And he has also forged blades, heavy armor on them. They are quite strong, but more afraid. I'm more afraid of Tarumon actually. Because, you know, there are a couple of heroes in the Rise of the Witch King. Which can actually, you know, change the outcome of those great battles. And Tarumon is definitely, you know, one of them. If not one of the greatest of them. Especially with the Dominate, he can actually gain a control of the targets the enemies. You don't want to be grouped against that. Fireball dealing massive damage. Devastation was just used to boost the eco. Level 6 will be unlocking the Thunderbolt. And yeah, we're gonna have a fight. I mean, this army is also looking scary to me. Charge attack will be used. We're gonna keep an eye on the Saruman. He's in between. He needs to run for his life. Uh, Drogov is going for a Fireball. Beautiful. Can he kill Saruman? That's the big question. I think he's gonna commit to that anyway. I don't know how much damage, almost no damage, man. I was expecting a bit more. Will he commit to that? Just fly away, maybe? Because the extra words are hitting like a truck. He will be trying to get away. Fireball. Boom! Explode, dragon. Explode. And that's how Saruman shows the drug of the dragon lord how to cast a fireball, ladies and gentlemen. All right. He's going to go anyway. He's just going to commit to that. Yes, now the summon dragon available. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. They are waiting for it, boys. Summon Dragon. Warchan must use on those half-troll swordsmen. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Summon Dragon is coming and arriving on the battlefield. Attack continues. Let's see. We have also some giants backing them up, by the way. If you didn't know, Summon Dragon... Thunderbolt on your face! Beautiful! Saruman is, you know... Shining and bright like a diamond, boys! This guy is the MVP for sure until this moment, but everything is still open. Friendly fire! Friendly fire! Oh, he's killing his own giants. Oh, no. Look this giant. <laughs> he's running in town! Oh, my God. He's actually... I mean, he's killing enemy units, but that's not the way you want to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's also not the, a great use of the summon dragon. I gotta be honest with you. He killed actually three of his own mountain giants. Which is definitely something you need to avoid to do. He's trying to go for the fortress, which is kind of questionable, because with one mountain giant only, it's going to take a while. Uh, Azok got cripples down, who was actually chasing down against Saruman. Saruman was able to get away. Incredible Saruman micro. Running it into the fire uh, breath from this dragon, which is not dealing the damage I was expecting. Not going to lie. I mean, those special summons, they are only good against units, normal units. Against normal structures, but not against heroes and the fortress. Azok has been taken down. I think he was just killing his own Azok with the fire. Um, Lourdes was able to take down. What a fiesta game. I don't know, guys, what's going to happen at the end of the day. Because everything is still possible. Lourdes is quite strong. I mean, those heroes from Isengard, they are quite impressive. Don't you think, guys? 
Guys, please let me know in the comment section below who you think is the MVP of the game. A hero? Name me a hero and a unit. That's what I want to know. Look the look this minimap, guys. This is full with structures of Irby. Just like at the right side. The game is quite even. We have 925 command points available. Almost 24 power points collected. Awaken Worm, not the greatest special summon once again. Will be now gone. Almost 25 power points collected now by Irby. 925. Yes, feel the fires. Yes, devastation. Like mentioned before, he is not gonna run out of resources any soon. On the other side, we have over almost 5 power points collected after the summon dragon. Full command points, like pretty much the last 15 minutes of the game for Mr. Smog. But Mr. Smog is struggling when it comes to execution. He can't execute. He can't go and take down Isengard completely. And, you know, he's trying the same movements again and again. And that's something you don't want to you, you don't wanna do. Look this Thunderbolt, guys. Don't tell me that... This is beautiful, guys. Don't you think, man? This is amazing. You gotta love those heroes from Isengard, man. Especially Lourdes. Who is for me, like mentioned before, one of the... Not one of the... I take it back. It's the greatest. He's the best hero of Rise of the Witch King. In terms of cost efficiency. Because, for, you know, for the cost... For an Isengard faction, you get a Lourdes on the field. Um, which Who is much more powerful... Wait a second. Uh, never mind. This guy is full health. I don't know what he's thinking. You can't commit to that. Wizard Blast was used. Knocking down the spiders from the special summon. And yeah, for that, what Lourdes offers you guys, you can't get that from any other hero around the same cost range. Even when they're a bit more expensive than Lourdes. I mean, he offers you a great hero who's able to, you know, shoot from a distance, put on the sword, use Carnage for the 1v1 potential. Pretty much able to almost 1v1 every single hero of Rise of the Witch King un unless those really expensive and uh, heroes or the strongest swordsman like, you know, Glorfindel. He's not going to be able to take him down, obviously, when he's using the Blade of Purity, which is a bit more stronger than the Carnage. And also um, Aragorn with the Blade Master, because Blade Master and Blade of Purity are giving you double armor and double damage. Yes. Uh, Carnage is, you know, increasing your damage output by 200%, but only you get 25% armor, which is not gonna be very effective in those big 1v1 battles. Talking about 1v1 battles, we have now the Summon Dragon from Irby, who is now being able to deal much more damage than Mr. Smok's Dragon did. And for the first time, for the first time since the last 15 minutes, we see Mr. Smok below a thousand command points. I mean... For me, I don't know if he can still come back from this situation, because now the game actually swapped in favor of Irby. For me, one of the major mistakes from Mr. Smog was the control of the Dragoff, the Dragon Lord. I mean, again, this guy costs a lot of cash, so you, you want to make the best use of him, which was not the case. Unlike Irby was microing with his Saruman, who didn't, you know, Irby didn't lose Saruman for the, not even once. And he was able to win those battles and fights solo, pretty much. Um, with that being said, one of the major mistakes, then the second one is obviously his summoned dragon was definitely not a great summon. Could be much, much better executed. He was more, he was killing his units and army more uh, than... Hey, thank you for the follow, by the way. I'm not even streaming. But anyways, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, he was killing his army more than the enemy army, and he was not able to kill the Stractures, and Awaken Worm was also kind of questionable. I mean, Watcher? Oh, yeah, I mean, you gotta love the Watcher, boys. This is one of the greatest special summons, by the way, against army. Especially when they are grouped like this, you are pretty much one-shotting everything, and I like this so much. Tarmon might be in trouble now. He's getting knocked down. God kills the Goblin King is going inside the jeans. I mean, God kills basic attacks or his 1v1 potent... Wait a second. Irby is so smart, actually. He was using Vision of Palantir again, giving Saruman 15% increased movement speed. I think Irby is planning to not lose Saruman once for the entire game. Level 3 Lumber Mill is also able to shoot, which is actually dealing a decent amount of damage. Fireball is available anyway, so we can knock him down or knock him back whenever he wants. And backup is already coming for Irby, so Saruman should be able to survive. Fireball? Oh yeah, <laughs> gets knocked back. 
I mean, who are you, goblin? Do you think you have a chance against a wizard? No, you don't. Now you get crippled down and never move again. <laughs> I mean, that should be a great combination, guys, right? So, whenever a hero, you know, kind of tries to reach to you and try to kill your Saruman, you can always use the Fireball, knock him back, as he's not able to move when he's knocked back. You use the Cripple ability from Lourdes, that means the hero will be just pretty much cripples down for like a, for like two, two minutes. It feels much longer than it actually is, but you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, you know, let's be honest, guys. When your hero gets crippled down from the enemy lords, it feels like eternity, right? It feels like forever that the crippled duration is never running off, uh, even though it's not that long. And yeah, I mean, this game should be now won by Irby. I don't see a coming back now to this one from Mr. Smog. If he manages to come back from this, um, I will give I will gift 100 subs. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean. Even if he kind of survives the attack, which I doubt he will. We have seen, even though he has the upper hands for like the first 15 to 25 minutes of the game, he was not able to execute. And that's one of the most important skills you need to master in Rise of the Witch King. You need to be able to execute. You need to be able to go for those all-out punishing battles. Because you don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your army. That's the last thing what you want to do, because you are... You know, trading power points, which is not gonna favor you as you have the upper hand anyway. But even though when it means that you will lose more units than your enemy, use your resource advantage, which definitely was on the side from Mr. Smog until the Field of Fires was up, uh, upgraded from the power point spellbook from the Isengard player Irby. Thunderbolt, actually one of my favorites now. I mean, I love this ability, by the way, guys. That's like so powerful. It deals so incredible a lot of, a lot of damage. And Cripple is, I mean, you gotta, I mean, I think Cripple is like a love-hate relationship, you know? You love Cripple when you are using Lourdes, but you hate it when you're uh, playing against that. Fortress is being surrounded. A great game it was, again, guys, to cast and commentate. I hope you enjoyed this one as well. I think we're gonna be ending this one pretty soon as the Fortress is getting demolished. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are healthy. I hope you guys are washing your hands pretty often. I hope you guys are watching my videos pretty often now that you are sitting at home. And, you know, if you are looking for more content like this, please don't forget to hit a like button on this video. Subscribe for more content like this. Check me out on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standard. Take care of yourselves, guys. You know, as always, stay Beyond Standards. Peace.